Let's face it, when doing a migration, you're probably going to want to migrate multiple repositories at a time. Well, the GitHub Enterprise Importer has you covered. Let's see how. Here we go. Hey y'all, I'm Mickey Gousset, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use the GitHub Enterprise Importer to migrate multiple repositories. In my previous video, we looked at the migrate repo command of the importer, which allowed us to migrate a single repository. More than likely, however, you will want to migrate repositories in a batch. For example, all the repositories that make up an application. We can do that with the GitHub Enterprise Importer as well. We are going to let the importer create a migration script for us. Now this script is a PowerShell core script, so it will run on any operating system, which will initially have code in it to migrate every repository in an organization. So if you just ran the script as is, it would migrate all repositories in an organization at once. You probably don't want to do that. Instead, you want to migrate batches of repositories. In that scenario, you just modify the migration script to only contain the repositories you want to migrate. Then run it and sit back and watch the migration happen. Okay, time to dive into a demo to show you how to create the migration script, edit it, and execute a migration. Let's get to it. So let's start off by finding some repositories that we want to migrate. So here we are in my Mickey Goose org. I've got 44 repositories in here. And in the previous video, we migrated one repository, but now we want to migrate multiple repositories. So let's say we want to migrate actions presentation again, but also composite action, miscellaneous scripts and GitHub actions caching demo. So those are the four that let's say we want to migrate. So I'm going to grab those and so I've got that list for just a little bit. So how do we migrate multiple repositories? Well, if we look at the GHGEI command, we ask for a little help. then we'll notice that there is a generate script command. And that generate script command, what it's going to do is create a migration script for us. Now this is actually a PowerShell core script, which therefore we could run on Windows, Linux, Mac, which will then migrate each individual repo and watch until those repos are finished migrating. So if we say gh gi generate script dash dash help, then here are all the different commands that we can use for, for, for calling this. There are a lot of different options, just like with migrating individual repositories, some of which only apply if we're migrating from, say, GitHub Enterprise Server to Cloud. In our example, we're going from GitHub Enterprise Cloud to Enterprise Managed Users. But in the future, we'll also do some videos on Enterprise Server to Enterprise Cloud, Azure DevOps to GitHub, etc. So we know the organization we're migrating from, we know the organization we're migrating to. If you'll remember last time from the last video, there's a couple of environment variables that we need to set with personal access tokens so that we can access those two organizations. I've already done that. I'm not going to show that again. If you've got questions on how to do that, you can look at the documentation or you can look at the previous video. So to generate the script, we're going to run this command. And what this command is going to do is it says ghgei generate script. We give it the source organization. 
We give it the target organization, and then I give it an output file, which I don't have to give it an output file. If I don't give it an output file, then it will create a file automatically called migrate.ps1. So in this case, we want to create an output file that is mickeymigrate.ps1. And we'll hit return. And you see how fast it created that file. And if we do a quick looking at our directory, we can see there is the mickeymigrate.ps1 file. Now what, what this has done is it has gone to the Mickey org organization and listed out every repository there and created the migration code to migrate every repository there. So if I just ran this right now, it would migrate all the repositories in the Mickey Gousset organization. But I don't want to do that. I just want to migrate those few that we were concerned with. So let's open up this code and see what it looks like and make some changes. So we'll open this up in VS Code. And what we've got here are we've got a couple of functions. So we can ignore this function. It's going to be called later and help us in uh, executing or kicking off the migration and giving us the migration ID. But we're not going to dive into exactly what it does. It's just it's there. But here's where it starts. The first section shows all the repos that we want to migrate. And for every repo that was in the organization, it, it creates a line that calls the execute and get migration ID. And it gets does that by calling ghgei migrate repo, which we saw using that in the previous video. The org is the Mickey Goose org. The repo is the first repo that it, it found. So it retrieved a list of repositories, and now it's going through that, creating all this code. Then it specifies my target repo, or target org, and my target repo, which I can modify the name here if I wanted to modify the name. We specify the queue only tag, and we set the default visibility to be whatever the initial repository's default visibility was. So in this case, public. So if I ran this, it would kick off that migration and get the migration ID and then put it in this array. And it would continue to do that for all of the repositories. All of these repositories. Then once it had gathered all the migration IDs, and at this point, some of the migrations are running, some of them are queued. At this point, it then will start checking to see if the migrations have finished. So it takes the first repository, the get a dad joke repository, and it calls the ghgei wait for migration command, where it passes in that migration ID and gets the... Um, which will then start returning where the migration stands. And then when it, when it finishes, when the migration finishes, we can check to see whether it was successful or failed. And then we'll continue to do that for all of the different migrations that we kicked off earlier. So that's all this file's really doing, is it gets, a, it gets all the repositories, it kicks off migrations for all the repositories, and then it um, watches to see if the migrations finish and gives you the results of the migrations for each of those repositories and outputs how many passed, how many failed. Now, in our case, we only wanted to do this for some a few specific repositories. So, for example, we only wanted to do this for, well, in this case, just to keep it easy, rather than the repositories we picked previously, let's just say we want to migrate these four repositories. Get a dad joke, my custom C sharp container action, my custom JavaScript action, and request sonar cloud key. 
So I only care about migrating those four repositories because let's say all of those are part of the same project. In that case, what I'll do is I will take the rest of these migrations that were going to be queued up all the way down to waiting for the migrations to finish and I'll just delete them. So now we're only going to queue up these four migrations. By the same token, I only want to wait for these four migrations to finish. So there's get a dad joke, my custom C sharp container, JavaScript action and request sonar key. So I can come in here and I can remove all of these checks for the rest of the repositories because we're not migrating those. So now I am kicking off migrations for these four repos and I'm watching for those four repos to finish. So let's save this file. And let's run it. So you can see it's kicking off the migrations for all of the four of the repos. That's the first step. It starts all four of those, fit, checks the results, and all of them failed. Interesting. So let's see if we can figure out why all of these failed. Now you'll notice that the total number of failed migrations is four. Resource protected by organization SAML enforcement. You must grant your personal access token access to this organization. So what that means is the following. I created a personal access token. So if we go to settings, and we go to developer settings, personal access tokens. Here's my personal access token that I created. However, I forgot to authorize it against my organization. So now that I've authorized it against my organization, if we go back to the Now that I've authorized it against my organization, if we go back to that organization, which is github.com slash Mickey Gousset dash Fabricam. Still don't have any repos, but now if we go back to where we ran the script and we run it again, let's see what happens. There we go, that, that looks better. We got a repository migration ID for the first repo. We got one for the second repo. We got one for the third, re or third repo right there. And we got one for the fourth one. So we have started those four migrations. So now we are checking to see the status of each migration and we will check the get a dad joke till it completes. Then we'll move to the next one, which may have already completed at that point, but we'll still get the stats back and we'll be able to say whether it passed or failed. So we'll give this just a moment to complete the migration. And then we will go back and look at the migrated repo while some of the other ones are migrating. We can actually see if we come back over here and we refresh our list of repositories, you can actually see that all four of the repositories are showing up here. They're all in either in process for migration or they've finished already because you can have up to five migrations running concurrently at the same time. For example, if I look at this request for Sonar Cloud, one of the ways you can tell that if it's finished is there will be an issue in here with the migration log. It hasn't finished because there's no issue in there with the migration log. If we come back and look, we can see that get a dad joke is still in progress. So the migrations, again, may go fast, may go slow, depends on the size of the repo, depends on the load on the migration system, I'm sure. But you can see here, get a dad joke is finished. And if we come back, over to 
our list of repositories and we go to get a dad joke, then we can see there is an issue in get a dad joke that contains our migration log. And it looks like everything migrated as we expected. And back at our command line, we can see that get a dad joke is finished. My custom C sharp container action is finished. My custom JavaScript action is finished, but we're still in the process of watching for the fourth one to finish, which is the request sonar cloud key. If we go to say the my custom JavaScript action repository that just migrated, Again, we can see that everything appears to have worked correctly, and we look at the migration log, and again, no problems were found. So we're waiting for the fourth one to finish. But what you've seen is, by executing that generate script command, we got a PowerShell script that could migrate all of our repositories. And then we are able to edit that script to only migrate the repositories that we care about. This is probably one of the main ways that I see people using the GEI tool. Normally they're, they're moving multiple repositories at once because they're migrating, say, a team or an application, and that team or application is made up of multiple repos. You could run that PowerShell script and it would then migrate every repo that's in that PowerShell script. So essentially it's migrating every organization. However, if you do want to migrate an entire organization at once, there is a command called migrate org. And that migrate org command migrates an entire organization, including the repositories and the teams. Now, we haven't really talked about what gets migrated and, and, and what doesn't get migrated. I'll do that in a future video. It's in the documentation. But by default, when you're migrating a repository or a group of repositories, it's just it doesn't migrate the teams because teams exist at an organization level. If you do a migrate org, which we'll see in a future video, it migrates the teams, but all it does is create the teams. It doesn't populate them with users because that's a whole nother story of how do you map users from the old system to the new system. And we can now see that the fourth migration is finished. All four migrations were successful. I've got lots of log files locally that I can look at, as well as going into the repositories and looking at the issue to see what the log file tells me about the migration for that particular repository. And there you go. That is how you migrate multiple repositories using the GitHub Enterprise Importer. I hope you've enjoyed this video on migrating multiple repositories using the GitHub Enterprise Importer. If so, don't forget to like the video subscribe to the channel, and smash that bell to be notified of my next video. Thanks for watching.